Hi, James from Life is Sport Games, and today I'm going to give you an idea of the best way to go about learning true life baseball. Here's the manual, 78 pages. Um, some people get a 78 page manual and uh, they get a bit overwhelmed. Um, myself included sometimes, uh, for, for example, um, I play. I used to play a lot of Civil War games, uh, the hex based ones, and they would have uh, really uh, in depth manuals. And uh, you kind of read a few pages and you put it back for a couple of weeks and get back to it. Um, I just wanted to ease uh, some anxiety some people have with large manuals because, uh, first of all, it's in size 12 font, um, which Thank you very much, but um, myself, I'm at the point where I could use bifocals, and a lot of manuals are in size 10 font. And if this manual had been in size 10 font, it would have been 59 pages instead of 78. Um, and then there's a lot of things in here that um, a lot of game baseball games don't even have. They just assume you know, and you, in fact, may know. So you can skip that part. Well, what I'm referring to is like basic scoring. Uh, See, I'm not assuming that people know that the shortstop is number six and the third baseman is number five. So that's in here as well and considered optional reading. Um, but as far as learning, the best way to go about learning the game is you want to learn the intro game, which is uh, on pages 11 to 15. So only four pages to read and you have all the instructions you need for the intro game. Uh, well, most instructions. Um, I'd also recommend reading pages 51 to 52 on ground out interpretation um, that those particular pages are actually for the basic game but um, they do they are similar enough that it is helpful for the intro game um, the intro game just uses this table here this is a flow chart for it but this is the table it's referred to an intro game only has uh, one ground out table for every position uh, the first baseman, pitcher, shortstop, third baseman, they all use the same table. Whereas in the basic and advanced games, they, there's one table for each position. Uh, third base, shortstop, first base, uh, second base, and the pitcher is on a separate one. So um, everything is more condensed and simplified in the intro game. Uh, and base running in that intro game is done uh, whether a runner, say a runner's on first and a hitter gets a base hit. In the intro game, the runner can either advance to second, his standard advancement, or take one extra base and go to third. And that's just determined on whether the batting roll was odd or even. Um, so once, once you play a few games of the intro game, then you can learn the basic or advanced games. And I wouldn't just start out and try to learn the whole advanced game. None of these, think of it as modules, and none of the modules are difficult. But if you try to learn them at all, they say the average person can only learn six new things a day. So just learn one or two new portions of the game a day, and then leave it at that. Um, don't get overwhelmed with it. Um, for after you've mastered the intro game, you can add the base running, base runner advancement from the basic game, which is just a three die roll. Uh, you read the red first, then the white one, and the blue is separate. And in fact, you can see, you can use the, think of the blue die as optional, um, and just use the red and white die to start with. Because all the blue die in the basic advanced game does is determine if the batter can advance on the throw. Like if there's a runner in second, there's a play at the plate at home, the hitter had a, a single, but he takes second because the throw from the outfield misses a cutoff man. Um, that's how baseball works. It isn't scored as a double, it's scored as a hit with a batter advancing on the throw. And that's what the blue die is. So when you're, when you're first learning that, if that's a new concept, if, I think it is, I don't think that's in any other baseball game. Um, just use the red-white die. And don't worry about base runner, uh, batter advancement rather. Um, just worry about the runners that are already on base and where they advance to. And, and that is covered on, let's see, Base Runner Advancement is pages 37 to 45. So after you read four pages and you learn the intro game, you read eight more, and you've got the Base Runner Advancement roles, and half of that reading is examples. And the Base Runner Advancement uses uh, this hit chart. Uh, you probably can't see this, but there's a chance to advance values for runners on first or runners on second. 
for singles or for just runners on second uh, on doubles. And um, that gives you like a value. And then you do two day roll. If that roll is less than the runner's chance to advance, he advances. If it's more, he doesn't advance. An extra base. Um, from there, I would suggest going to pitcher check rolls. And that is pages 25 to 27. And see, intro games don't really use the pitchers at all, other than if the pitcher throws left handed or right handed. Yeah. Intro games are pretty much just the offensive stats. Um, and with, uh, so, and, and there's a basic game as well, but um, I don't know, I, I'd suggest going from the intro game to the advanced game because there is very little time difference. An average intro game takes 20 minutes. I'm talking about once it's, you've got it down and, and mastered. And a and, uh, basic game will take about 28 minutes and the advanced game is 35 minutes. So only seven more minutes and you're getting um, as accurate as you can because um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a separate tutorial on, on this, but uh, so I'll, I'll just cover it briefly here. But like how it works is you for a pitcher, you take the outcome, and you it either is confirmed by the pitcher table here or it's um, altered. And some pitchers, this pitcher is a starter. Some pitchers can start, if they relieve, their column is here. If they can start and relieve, they have two different columns. So they actually have splits. And therefore, you can, you can use them probably smarter than the actual manager did. Because actual managers sometimes tend to just stick with a guy and he's getting blown up starting. But he turns out he's actually a good reliever because he... If a guy throws, uh, he can throw harder if he only has to throw 30 pitches rather than, you know, 108. Um, so once you've um, learned the intro game, then you can learn the base running advancement for the basic or advanced game. Then you can add in the pitcher checks. Then you can add in, like I said, the ground outs for uh, the base for the intro game are just all condensed onto one chart. And uh, for the for the advanced game on on table, I think I said this before. They each have their own um, position. So the first baseman, second baseman, third baseman all have their own table, and and that adds more accuracy um, to the game. Uh, and from there, you can add in positive defensive roles that only happen on. And now, now, if you don't know anything about the game, it probably sounds overwhelming, but you do it um, one thing at a time, you know. And positive defensive roles isn't even listed as an optional rule, but you could think of it as an optional rule. Pretty much any rule in the game is optional. Um, the positive defensive role is only on die rolls of 11 20, or 21 off the initial batter. And then a new roll is done, and if the fielder has um, a range, a positive range, there's a chance that he turns a double into a single or a single into an out. And uh, that's really important because um, unlike the intro game, the advanced game takes into account the pitchers and the defense. And so you're gonna, uh, the teams are going to have their real strength like they did for that particular year. Um, whereas if you play an intro game, it's going to favor the offensive-minded teams. Like if a team has an awesome offense but really poor defense and really poor pitching, they aren't penalized in the intro game. And so they get kind of an unfair advantage. But um, the intro game has the advantage of it's quicker to play and it's quicker to learn. Um, the advanced game isn't really difficult to learn. It's just maybe a little bit time-intensive. And that's why you can kind of add on to it in modules, and that's that's what I would recommend. Um, and I'm, I would just like to point out that I will be doing more tutorials. Um, I plan to um, put up a base running tutorial, and um, I plan on doing it from the easiest example to a more difficult example. And I'm also open to taking suggestions um, if you've got the game and you've feel something needs to be clarified or you you want to see how it's performed um, you know kind of live 
um, make a suggestion on my website and I'll try to get it up as soon as possible.